issues. Thank you, and uh, greetings to all your people. Indeed. Mm. Your side, the minority in parliament, is involved <laughs> in a showdown over the budget it cannot win. Why? Well, uh, we are not on any showdown. Uh, it is only the MPP that there is something like showdown. Uh, we serve in our constituents. If you listen to the minority leader, he was very quite clear that there were quite a number of tax measures that were not reported in the budget policy document and yet were being smuggled into parliament. Uh, why will that happen? It means that they are not telling us the full story. And, 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 and we felt that at this point in time, the people of Ghana are going through quite a lot of hardships. And so on the basis of that, we cannot approve a budget that contains so many taxes. The majority, on the other hand, thinks that that judgment was passed on Wednesday when the, the speaker said the eyes have it. Okay, so when a question is put uh, in Parliament per our standing orders, we all have ears, okay, and we do listen. So the speaker says, I think the eyes have it. Then you come on order 1132 and say that when I listen, I think the the nose have it. So it is about a contention saying that you might have heard the eyes to be louder, I might have heard the nose to be louder. The standing orders then say that. Since it is an opinion and not a decision uh, made or a what do you call it, a, a ruling made by the speaker, if it's a ruling, mm. our standing orders require that you challenge the speaker's ruling with a substantive motion. But if it is an opinion, you can challenge it under 1132. And the speaker gave an opinion. I think the eyes have it. So you also get up and say, I think the nose have it. It is for him to settle that. Okay, and when he then is called upon under 113, it means that 113 provides that you must go for a head count. So, I mean, in I order mean, to so decide. Who, who, so, who's, who's, who's to blame for what appears to be the mess over the budget? Um, the minority thinks that the, the speaker may be siding with your team uh, for reasons best known to them. But who's to blame for this mess? Well, there's no mess. It is a simple parliamentary procedure dictated by the standing orders of the House. And in Parliament, we work with the Constitution. We work with our standing orders and our practice. So except that you want to say that you don't require us to invoke the standing orders, which is an appropriate legal environment within which we work. And we said that on the basis of the standing orders, the speaker's opinion that he thinks the eyes have it is not in accord with what we think we had. So, so then the, we see, we see a, a standoff here because the majority side, including the finance ministry, uh, of the opinion that that budget, budget, statement, budget statement has passed. So it's not an op your opinion doesn't matter. In the, in the House, when a decision is made, the speaker goes on to make consequential announcement. Those consequential announcement is that the budget is passed and then he, he, he hits the gavel. Mm -hmm. Did you see any of that? He was proceeding with listening to the minority's objection, okay, and challenging him. And on the basis of that, he agrees that his, his, his reasoning or his opinion has been challenged. And we have come under the appropriate standing orders. And that standing orders invokes him to, head, to take a head count. But that opportunity did not uh, Then they walk out. Itself. So they then walk out because the speaker actually declares that we should do a head count. So the process is of settling whether or not the eyes have it or the nose have it was not conclusive because the procedure when it started, they realizing that they don't have the numbers, decided to walk out. You have brought your budget. You need your budget to be approved. And you walk out on your budget? That is weird. Because in, if you go and take the votes and proceedings, which records more or less the minutes of the previous day, nowhere in those uh, votes and proceedings would you come to the conclusion mm -hmm. that we passed the budget. I see. The Minister of State uh, at the Finance Ministry, Dr. Amin, uh, believes that 
uh, once that uh, headcount that the speaker was looking for did not happen, then whatever happened prior to that, the eyes have it still stands, and so they have a, have a budget statement to work with. They, they can they can they can have an opinion. Nobody challenges them. Why are they not in parliament today? Because they know that the the parliament was adjourned yesterday without a conclusion on the matter. I see. And that process will start, will continue today. Okay, okay and realizing that they don't have the numbers, go and see them. Only Chairman Sabonsu, Anod uh, Ompre, uh, and Habib, Honorable Habib, are the only three people sitting there. The troops are at the back, nobody is there. Speaking of numbers, do you also have the numbers on your side to reject the budget as you hope it would? You, it see, would you see, we've expressed an opinion. If you have the numbers, come with your numbers and do it. Our numbers don't matter. It is your budget. It is your budget. You want the budget passed. We are against it. Even if we are two, we are against it. Come with your numbers and so that we are only two, and therefore you have the numbers to pass it. You haven't come. So why, why, why are you interested in our numbers? Then to what, what end? You know, the impact it could have on the country if the standoff uh, persists. They have a government to run. And they have to show maturity. They have to show magnanimity. They have to build consensus. We cannot teach them. If they think that the way to go is to abandon the house, a landlord abandoning his house for land gas to take over, that, that is very unfortunate. So if they believe that they have a country to run and they have a budget to pass and they have the people of Ghana at heart, what are we disagreeing? We are in disagreeing with the raft of tax measures that will impose hardships. I see. Is it difficult to ask for? So what is the demand now? Take out those taxes you're sneaking in and would, would approve the budget with you? We are simply saying that the budget as you have presented, we don't think that it's in to the people, the benefit of the people of Ghana. And as a result of that, we are opposed to it. So my guess is then you, ha you have other um, ch challenges or concerns about the budget beyond the sneak taxes. What would those be? So you have a government that, one, you are running, you are running an IMF program, which is an international business transaction. You've not presented those agreements to parliament. For parliament to decide whether those are the obligations that we want to sign on for the people of Ghana. And yet you are building a budget around those international obligations which have not been approved by parliament. Okay, so what does that mean? Are you taking away the powers of parliament? What are we up against if the budget is not passed in time, uh, even before recess for parliament? So the laws are quite clear. Uh, the purse is with the people of Parliament, I mean the people of Ghana, which is the Parliament of Ghana. You have come to us to approve for you certain expenditures. We have also come to approve for you the sources from which you will finance those expenditures. We say that we, we disagree with the measures that you are bringing. But you know that you are, you are working against time. By latest, by 31st December, your appropriations will run out mm -hmm. and you will need a new appropriations and you don't come to work. This is outstanding. This is a major, major uh, issue about running the country. In fact, from January 1st, you can't even pay salaries and you don't come to parliament to try and explain your case, to try and build bridges and see how you will get that done. You only bring your leaders. It doesn't mean that they are, they are it, it doesn't mean to me that they really are interested I in, see. in, in now, the budget. I mean, you have identified concerns uh, about the budget, uh, but they have also outlined some measures, some of which you have um, described as dirges. Um, let's get into that. Why do you think those measures are dirges? Um, do you drive? Mm -hmm. You drive. Mm -hmm. You buy fuel. Mm -hmm. When you bought fuel, a couple of years back under John Dramani Mahama, you were buying a whole gallon, which is four and a half liters for 16 cities. Today, you are buying those same uh, uh, fuel that you're buying. You are buying just one liter. In fact, last year, you were buying one liter for 24 cities. Today, you are buying one liter for 13 cities. 
Okay, is that not a dead? You comfortable with that? Are you enjoying it? Well, they, they tell us that the no, time... No, it is you. It's not about them. <laughs> it is you. Have they increased your no. salary no. commensurately? No. <laughs> so those are the dedges. This is like pushing a funeral dead down our throat. And we want to ensure that we protect the average Ghanaian. The level of well, people but, who, I mean, this, are, despite what you have said, yeah. they, on the other hand, have also talked about how things are, are going down now, uh, how they are turning the corner for the country. They have made examples of how, again, in the same example of the field, uh, go, going down, down to 13, from 21 to 13, um, that is turning the corner as far as they are concerned. You buy a litre for 13, and that is a corner. It means that your vision... Well, well, but if you were at 21 and you're moving to 13, who took it that there? is progress. Who took it there? Who took it there? Uh, is, is that not progress? Is that, who took it there? So, so, you decide to mess us up. When we complain and you, 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 you losing it a bit and we are still tight, you praise yourself. Who took it to 21? But it, it, it does give hope. I that, don't, you I, know, I'm things... just asking a very simple question. Who took it there? Who took it there? So if, if the current administration, and I want you to follow me, yeah. if the current administration am, took it to you. 21 yeah. and they have brought it down to, they have managed to work it out to bring it down to 13 mm. and they call it progress, it is progress, isn't it? To you. Is it not? So when you get there to buy the fuel and you're paying a lot more than you were paying before and somebody tells you that is progress, you are paying but, for but it. You are paying for it. They are not paying for that's, it. That, isn't it something it, it, to look forward to that... Go and check my car. It's showing mm -hmm. red. Mm -hmm. And I have to manage it for a few days. That is progress because it is so expensive that when I buy fuel, okay, it doesn't take me the number of days. I see. Outside of fuel, when we look at the indicators, <laughs> you know, the projections they are making, um, for overall GDP growth... In 2023, they tell us so far we've had 3.2% uh, growth. They had projected 1.5. We do the same for non-oil GDP. They, they, they're saying we're doing 3.9 at this point. Inflation has gone down from uh, in the 50s to now 35.2. So we are making progress as a country. We are turning the corner, as they are saying. What are you comparing? You came at media, you gave us first quarter, second quarter. We are in November. Come and update us. You still give us first quarter, second quarter. And you say that is progress? Where did they get that 32, 3.2% uh, in November? Okay, and they are telling you that we are in November. They still don't have September numbers. Well, they, they're saying it's for the first half of 2020. Are we dealing with first half at approving an annual budget? Are we doing media review? What are they hiding? If you read the budget, they will tell you that they will end the year at 2.3%. Is that how you turn the corner? How can an economy that was growing half year at 3.2% suddenly end at 2.3%? Why? Is it being put in reverse year now? No. Well, the reasons that the finance ministry has given is the external factors that, that have hit the country. Every economy is hit with external factors. You manage an economy as part of a global economy which faces external well, I, I was hoping I was hoping you'd let me finish that point. Yeah. So the point they are making but I is... I didn't even answer, finish your, uh, your question, and you jumped in, because you spoke about inflation. Mm -hmm. So let me deal with that. Go ahead. So inflation at 54, was it... Was that 54 that you are comparing with in September or October? It was in December. Are we in December? So do you know that in December, the pressure on inflation is higher? The things you are buying today now, go in December and buy them. And well, you see the prices. So you compare... Well, are, are those not <laughs> ritual increases? Because in, in, in your you, era as I, well, I, December, election years, we maybe, see spending go up a little bit. Maybe if you pay attention, you will understand me. I'm just simply saying that you don't compare mangoes to apples. You don't compare December inflation to October inflation. It's never done. You get it? In October... Your food inflation is lower because we're harvesting crops. Food is cheaper on the market. So you will definitely get a lower food inflation. Wait in, until December when we are finished taking all the fruits that you have you harvested in October. And we are now having to go into our rooms and bring what we have stored for the but rest it, of the it, year. It, so December, but that's the point. nobody compares. I mean, it didn't, it didn't jump from 50s plus 
to 35. There was a, a decline, a steady decline from that December to where we are Maybe now. Maybe you are not. So, that, so, that, so, so we are not comparing mm. December to October. So we are looking at the progress that mm. we have seen and I'm in the figures. I'm explaining to you that there are cyclical influences in the course of the year that automatically moderates inflation. So you cannot be comparing December inflation to say June inflation and tickle yourself and laugh. Because December inflation have several influences. So wait until, why are they not comparing September to September? Nobody does that in economics. That you decide to compare your inflation or your depreciation of the currency in September against somebody's December. Somebody who has fought the full battle. I'm coming. Somebody who has fought the full mm -hmm. battle and withstood all the pressures. You are still yet to meet the height of the pressures. And you say that you've done, well, you've done well. Right. So, so what, what I'm trying to draw your attention to is the fact that if we were to put those figures on a graph, what pattern do you think we'll see? If you were a student uh -huh. and I asked you to tell me the progress we've made and we are in September, you are not comparing September now to September last year, but you are comparing September now. No, 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 no that's, that's not what I'm, no, that's me, not what I'm I, asking. I am making a point. I am uh -huh. making a point. Unless you want to tell me what to say, but I'm making a point and I'm not communicating to you. I'm communicating to your audience uh -huh. that if I gave you, I ask you at this point, tell me whether we have had improvement and we are in October. And you are not comparing October now to October last year. And you are comparing October now to December last year. I'll fail you. I see. So what I'm asking also mm. is that if we were to put the figures from December um, up until now, we were to put it on a graph, what do you think will be the pattern that we'll see? I don't know, because I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. So why should I be interested in an average student doing an analysis that is irrelevant. I, I wouldn't see. see that. I see. Let's, let's move on from that. Let's talk about your apology to Harry Maguire and linking his performance at uh, Manchester United to that of the vice president. Um, let's talk about why he decided to apologize. Maguire, in, 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 uh, somewhere last year around this time when we were doing the budget, it coincided with the World Cup. And there was very little interest in the budget. And so I, I, I took a decision that I needed to do something that would bring back the interest in the budget. So I decided that I would pick Maguire and compare his attributes, at least at, at that time, to that of one person who gave so much hope. Don't forget that if you understand football, Maguire, when he was at Leicester City, was seen as, as one of the best defenders in the world. And he was bought for a very hefty price of 80 million pounds. He was the most expensive defender in England. So much hope. He comes to England and he becomes the threat to Man United that paid 80 million pounds for him. Okay? We also had similar people who, who, had so, who gave us so much hope. Similar to Maguire. Delivering lectures everywhere on how to manage the economy and, and creating so much, you know, vibe around him. He was overhyped, he went to Malata market. And I remember I told you people that inflation is not calculated in Malata market. Inflation, there are 260 markets that are surveyed, okay? We survey over 260 goods and services in the basket. Some of the goods are not even available in Malata market. Somebody who basically had little or no appreciation of the methodology used by the Skaska service engage in this mediocre, this display of ignorance. And this somebody is the vice president? Yeah. And that's what he did at uh, 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 Malata Market. Right. As a matter of fact, he included cement. At that time, cement was not even part of the goods and services. And we're clapping for him. He said he, he, he could restore the value of the city. So there was so much hope. In fact, he was seen as the whiskey, the man with the magic wand. Similar to that of Maguire, who was seen as 
the biggest hope for Manchester and, and that's why you fight. make the statement. But you came back to apologize. Yeah, and and that's what back, I want to know. I came back because I'm a, I'm a soccer fan. And everybody who watches football will tell you that Maguire has improved significantly. Last night, I watched him play against Villarreal. And he was the, 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 the standout defender in, 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 in that match. Uh -huh. Even though they, they lost a two-goal margin and ended up with 3-3. But at least through no fault of his, he played... A great match. But yesterday. the vice president hasn't. He, in fact, recently he scored a goal in the Premier League. Okay. He's become the most important defender, first on the list, in Manchester United. To the extent that when they lost key player, Lendelof went injured. We know that Rafael Varane went injured. They called on him and he took his chance. I see. Unfortunately, where did our hopes end us? IMF with cap in hand. Begging everybody, even people who borrowed from, we are telling them we cannot pay. We are men of straw. To the extent that the IMF tells you, and that's that's on, that's on the vice president. Oh yes, when you tell people who borrowed money from that you cannot pay, you can call it any big English. You but, simply say that you cannot pay. But the majority leader will think otherwise. He he I'm, thinks. I'm not. I'm not speaking what he thinks. No, I'm speaking no, what I know. No, 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 no. Follow yeah, me. Yeah. He thinks that. Singling out the vice president is, is not correct because the vice president does not take the decisions. He says the back stops with the president. So when I criticized Maguire, was the Maguire the only player in the team? There were 11 players. But don't you think the back stops but, with the president? He is the decision maker at the end of the day? So you have a role to play. Mm -hmm. the, vice, the president himself singled you out and told the people of Ghana, that as a, as a result of you being his vice, we should look out for that oneness. You didn't tell him, that, hey, my brother, the back doesn't stop with me. Why are you telling the people of Ghana? And you actually, you were so happy that the first few couple of budgets, you will come to parliament with a finance minister, first time in history, to ensure that whatever you had said should be put in the budget did not disappear on the way from the Ministry of Finance and parliament. You followed up and you were nodding at every one of them. Okay? You actually held a stakeholder engagement, a, a lecture, and called it stakeholder en engagement, where in April 2019, you were saying that we have done better as the head of the economic management team. You went out and told them that you have arrested the city or the dollar. You didn't know that the back stops with the president. You went everywhere and said that Ghana card. You have, we were Ghana card was there before. So, you, what is it that Baumia said that did not become a government policy or that was not funded in the budget? One, you said one village, one dam. It wasn't in the budget. You said you moved the economy from taxation to production. Was it not in their first budget? You said one, uh, one district, one factory. Was it not in the budget? You said, I, I'm coming. I just want to show you that. That is not how you treat somebody who doesn't so, matter. I mean, the point, you, the point you're the saying point is, that is that he cannot extricate himself. He delivered lectures and propounded those naive experimental theories. They became MPP manifesto promise but could, could and, he proceeded, have taken, could, and proceeded to become MPP a government policy. Well, they could be there, but could he have taken the decisions mm -hmm. that would apply to the economy and give, her the, give the results that the Ghanaian people want? Could he have taken those decisions? So what are the decisions? You went to a lecture room and said that you are going to move the economy from taxation to production. The president that the back stops with believes you, agrees with you, and put it in an MPP manifesto. It didn't end there. He turns it into a government policy. What decision again do you want? And fund it. What decision do you want? I see. You got up and said that you would uh, div you put together a Zogo Development Plan. Fund. It became some, uh, an MPP manifesto. It got implemented in the budget. I don't know what decisions you want. Well, he he tells us that he will be his own man, you know, in the in the coming uh, race, and if given the the nod to be president. But I want us to look at the. Um, you want me to respond to that? That he will be his own man. No, please. Oh, okay. <laughs> If, if, let's look at the uh, import bill uh, that we know is exceeding $14 billion this year. Uh, someone would have thought that the minority side will support the legislation that is planning to cut down on the importation 
or uh, sudden goose into the country like offal and tripe. Why is the minority not doing so? No, we just simply are saying that go through procedure. As simple as that. We are a country of, of, of systems and processes. And parliament is in charge of its own rules. But you see, it is people like you that encourage them. In 2017, didn't they abolish taxes at the port? Was that supposed to drive away imports or open our doors for imports? Well, you know, in this country, why didn't you ask them? How can a country governed by people whose major policy trunk is industrialization? Right, so I'm so, coming. So, no, so, no, let, so me, is, let me, is, let, me let me learn. Let me learn. Let me now. Mm -hmm. A country that a government that says we want to do industrialization, one district, one factory. You have infant industries that need to be protected. You came and opened the borders. Is it not the same government? What has changed? So, they so, came what, so what I'm asking is, yeah. let's, let, let's lay the issues down. Mm. Um, if we are spending $14 billion a year yeah. on importation, in yeah. fact, on offers alone, yeah. uh, the Yemuadia, we are spending yeah. over $160 yes. million. Dollars. Yeah. And uh, the plan is to restrict some of uh, these things from coming into the country, perhaps even boost local production of same. Um, we should, I mean, I would think that it will pass real quick, okay. but it's not. No, so it is not about passing or not passing. Okay. You only want to change the name of who is importing it. That's what they want to do. They want to change the name of the importer. They don't want to stop the imports because they've told you that they want to give permits. Which they will publish. It doesn't matter. Whichever way they do it, they will change why the name. Why not? Is no. that not transparency? If you want to ban it, why give permits? So, the permit... No, no, I don't think oh. the idea is to ban it. No, oh, no hold okay. on. So, hold so on. how does that reduce the... I don't that, think the idea is to so ban it. So, how does that reduce they the They say they want billion. to restrict... Oh, I'm just saying that... Oh, in this country, in 2007, uh -huh. there was food crisis here. There was a gentleman who was the president of the republic and belongs to this family. He told us that he was going to ban rice imports. He changed his mouth and said, oh, no, rather the reports will have to pass through only Takradi port and Tema port. In the end, one company. You remember Finatrade? Right. No, I'm coming. You remember Finatrade? The import of rice top, it was rather the name of the importers changed to one company. This is what they want to do. They want to monopolize. When they came and said, oh, uh, Galamse, what happened? They only change the people who are doing the galamsey. But, but they, they are oh, also hold offering on, transparency. Hold on. Let me finish and you talk. You see, you have asked me a question, so let me land. They only change the name of the galamsey people uh -huh. into their people. Today, our waters are completely like, gone. Like who? Oh, I mean... Why? Unless you are not in this country. Mm -hmm. You are not in this country. No, you tell me. Like, no, like who, no. who are they? Who, who have they handed ah, over Galamsey? Having to be listening to uh, Frimpon, uh, Professor Prefon, uh, what as, as far as the AG is concerned, there is no evidence I am not discussing to, AG. To, 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 I am to not what, discussing to, AG. To the report listen, that he's listen made. Listen to me. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen AG take a government operative to court? Is that where your standard is? That the AG, you expect the AG to say there's evidence and take an MPP man, well, it, never it, mind a government operative to court. Have you is, seen something? Is that to say you do not trust the AG's response is, to uh, the Galamse report? You know I have never trusted. You yourself, you don't trust it. Because even when, even when there were video documentaries, what happened? Did they go after anybody? Even when the minister appointed by the president pinpointed names, did they end up in court? But so what evidence do you want? Why, why isn't parliament doing anything about it if there is concrete evidence? Isn't that where... Parliament does not go to court on criminal proceedings. No, no, I'm, I'm not asking so, you to go so, to court. So, what I'm saying so what is that you, you, the parliament could have questions answered. Have you had your questions answered about these people you say have been handed over Galamsey to? So that's all you want. You just want us to call them to well, come. Well, it could be to, a starting point, oh don't no, you think? Listen, listen to me. I think you should be raising the standards of accountability. Somebody has been given a job. But I'm coming. What, what, more is more I'm coming. What, what is more important what is than question? parliament? What is questions? But that's what you do in parliament. So, you call people for so questions. That, you that, ask that the lead, Bank of that, Ghana to that, come that, for that, questions. That, 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 that why lead, do you do that? I'm explaining to you. Does that lead... To any prosecution. If it's not important, why do you do that? It so could be we, a starting we, point. We, we decide what we want to do. And we are saying that under this system, the, the, the special prosecutor and the attorney general, in fact, the special prosecutor, okay, 
is only performing a delegated function of the Attorney General. So if the Constitution mandates you, gives you all the powers, and you are not using it, and nobody is asking them questions, but rather they are asking somebody whose duty is to provide legislation and oversight that, oh, why have you not asked this person a question? Is that what you want us to do? Is that the level of accountability that you want? How many times, if you call a minister to the, to, 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 to the house and the minister comes and tells you what he wants, what do you do? Does that solve the problem? What, what, no, what, I, hear, what the I hear what I hear at the yeah. end of it is the fact that parliament uh, could be helpless in performing its oversight duty on the executive. But what I hear is a media that is complicit in this matter. How so? A media that How so? Asking, I have asked you a media, to perform your duty of I'm oversight. Coming, it I'm could coming, be the I'm, first point I'm coming, of, I'm coming. of accountability. So when, 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 and you say no because so it goes I nowhere. The budget, when I reject the budget, you come to ask me the implications. Okay? When I reject the budget to protect you, when I come here, you take issue with me. Nobody has taken that, issue. You with have me. done that. Those yet. are questions that need to so be asked. So there are also questions I'm answering. And I'm saying that you, a member of the fourth estate of the realm, what are you doing to ensure that the Attorney General prosecutes members of his own government? My guess is you have also not seen the stories that have been run then. What stories? The end result is what? The end result is that Galamse is still going on. We, we, we and now the end result is that the end result is that they are expanding the frontiers. So, so, so honorable, I'm coming. I'm coming. Honorable, hold on. I'm coming. I, I, let, I'm let, let's make you. the point about the media. Yes. Because when the media unearths some of these Galamse stories, yes. the media cannot say I am taking that so so and so pe person on. Exactly. The point of accountability could mm. have started in Parliament. Parliament does not prosecute. I'm not saying you prosecuting. Both. Parliament I, has I, no I, have, I have talked about the fact that how the many first times, point of accountability how many could times, be... How many times having members of parliament ask questions about Galamsey? So, so no, I'm in, coming. In summary, Is it that you, summary, are, you are oblivious, summary, you are oblivious, oblivious, oblivious of the fact that I'm, questions have been asked in parliament about Galamsey and about Galamsey related matters? Very well. Okay? Very well. If the Attorney General is not minded, should we keep Discussing the same you matter. Can't, you, you, that's, that's the and point I'm, I'm making. That's the point you, I'm making. I'm not telling you. I'm not telling you. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. No, let me, let me finish that. While the media, on. while the media does what it's supposed to do, tell the stories, we have even gone beyond that and done campaigns. I, I can count on my fingers the number of media houses who have not done campaigns on Galamse. And that's just an example of some of the things that we do. Parliament, on the other hand, what I'm hearing from you is we ask them the questions, they don't answer, and so we are folding our arms. No. We are simply saying that it's a collective fight. We expect you to place the satellite where it belongs. And we are, aren't we? I, I'm not aware. You're not? Yes. You haven't I, seen any Galamse from, from, from TV3, I am not uh, aware. Uh, from I, the fourth, fourth just estate. Just as you are not aware of all the questions we are asking in Parliament, why do you expect me to be aware? You are not aware of all the questions we are asking on Galamse. You are not. So, so and you expect what are, what are you, are, you, have a, you have a reporter sitting in Parliament and you are not aware. Today, they want to expand that strategy they use on Galamse to include imports. They now want to have the right to determine who imports. And we know these people, when you give them the right, they give it to their people. So they now want to monopolize the import market and give it to their people. Just like it happened in 2007, only one company was importing rice. You end up realizing that one person will now be importing the rice that you are complaining about. Okay, one person will be importing the Yemadier and things you are I complaining see. about. One company will be importing sugar. Okay, so what, if we are still going to be? keep, if we are still going to keep the fourteen billion dollar business in the import of food and overs and the rest, why do you want to monopolize it for one? What, what could be a more appropriate solution to the high import bill that we have? What could be a more appropriate solution to it? You should be interrogating what they told you about the gadgets about economy. Or you were not in the on the, you were not following the campaign trail of Akufado. He said that he had a blueprint, and the blueprint was one district, one factory. Uh -huh. How come one district, one factory leads to 14 billion import bill of food? He said 
one village, uh, one uh, 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 planting for food and jobs. You haven't asked him why are you doing planting for food and jobs and we are importing rice. You haven't asked him. Simply put, this is these are failed policies of government. The implication of which they want to now profit from by finding a way to legitimately assign to themselves the right to determine who imports. Does your, not that we are that, does your side in, in this political climate have any suggestions? Particularly in regards so, so, so to... No, hold on, hold on. In, my conversation in, 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 particular be, regard, yeah. in, you know, in particular regards to the import restriction bill, let's stick with that one. Um, what, what, are the, what, what is the solution to passing this bill, which we know is causing us a lot of problems? And I have told you that the problems will not be solved. You know that. I have told you that they have not banned imports. They are simply changing the name of the importer. If they took out that, would, you know, if would they it took, work? And that is why they don't want... You see, in Parliament, when you bring uh, a legislative instrument, the rules are quite clear. Our standing orders are clear. If you lay it, 21 days start counting. You can't cross a T. You can't dot an I. So you take it with all the errors. So because of that, in the wisdom of Parliament, we have established a procedure. That look, go to the subsidiary legislation with the ally. Have, we call it a pre-laying process. Let you and them go through it one after the uh, uh, clause by clause. And be satisfied that there will not be any errors. You see, if there are errors, for instance, and you decide to lay it, and it is, it, it is counting, you can't stop it unless you get to test majority in the House which is easier, to prelay, deal with the issues, so that when it goes through, we don't need a two-thirds majority to correct an error. There are also instances where the law itself must ensure that you are not using a subsidiary legislation, which is an ally or a CI, to amend a substantive legislation. Now, when that happens, either you get a two-thirds majority or you go to court, and argue that they use a subsidiary legislation, certain portions of that legislation is repealing or amending a substantive law. Which one is easier? That you could have corrected it. Somebody could have drawn your attention. Mm -hmm. Hey, there is this law. This thing contradicts that law. And when we pass it in its current form, the effect it will have is that it will amend the substantive law, which is not allowed. Okay? Or... You lay it, and then we go through all these legalities. For instance, let's link ally to even a CI. So you bring a CI, you lay it 21 days. No T, no dot. So you create a constitution, a constituency by mistake. You create a constituency in the western region. One of the electoral areas is in Boga Central constituency. Mm -hmm. Listen to me, oh. we allow it to pass like Katie Hammond wants to do. So the people who are voting in that electoral area in Boga, they are actually voting for a candidate in Takrade. You have to go to court and make a case that, look, how can we have an administrative structure mm -hmm. where a constituency sitting in, say, Tamale would have a polling station or a number of polling stations constituting an electoral area sitting in Accra? If you don't go through this pre laying you will not see it. I see. And it will pass. So we are simply saying, Katie Amo, Honorable Katie Amo, you are a learned person. Fortunately, you are a lawyer. Fortunately, you are one of the most experienced members of this house. We just want to go through that procedure that in our wisdom, we have established. So you go to the subsidialization of Pile. They go through it clause by clause. You see Unless you see how parliament works at committee. Mm -hmm. At committee, we don't do NDC and PPO. We do the nation. Right. So even Katie Hammond himself may be persuaded at committee to make certain changes. And members at committee may persuade him to add certain things that will even improve the legislation. Right. Why does he not want to go there? Why does he want to lay a legislative instrument which we have not seen we are not aware of its content, right. knowing the legalities involved in passing a legislative instrument. But I, I want to pick your thoughts on uh, $160 million 
plus mm. of offals of Yemwadie into this country. I mean, what do you think about that? I'm worried as you are. But you see, for those people, they see 160 million business, dollar business. They are seeing $160 million business. How do I take a pie of that? So let me bring a law that gives me the power to decide who imports it so that I have control over that import. And cumulatively, you are looking at a group of people who wants to control the business of $14 billion. I see. Let's talk about some of the tax exemptions that uh, yeah. could be coming in in the... 2024 uh, period. We know that some uh, tax ex exemptions to the tune of some $454 million are being given away. Um, my guess is the minority has some uh, concerns with that. What would those be? Parliament is not a rubber stamp. We are not there to do the bidding of the executive, even though we are supposed to support the executive to deliver to the people of Ghana. That support can come in actually rejecting certain things that are brought to you by the executive. So the executive, either by executive uh, approval of the president or by a cabinet approval, okay. would communicate certain actions that they want parliament to consider. And the word is consider. Uh -huh. So we will discuss the merits and demerits of it and where we feel that it does not align with the interests of the people of Ghana. Who will communicate that to the president? I mean, uh, uh, from, that, from experience, yeah. what considerations would you uh, usually make about tax exemptions? So one is about our fiscal environment. In a situation where you know that the government is already struggling for revenue and comes to you and says that nevertheless give that revenue to somebody for free, we would ask you questions. How are you going to fill that void? How are you going to fill that void? Why are you taxing the poor people with e-levy and giving rich people free taxes? So we would ask those questions. I see. For them to understand the fiscal impact of some of their policies on the very poor and vulnerable who rather need support and the kind of people whose taxes they have brought and are, are willing for us to forgive them. We would ask those questions. I see. We will ask the question, what is the benefit to the state? Is it going to create employment? What employment? 